Well, very simply, the fact that this year is uh, 700 years since Dante died. He died in September 1321. And I've been reading some of the papers, magazines, other celebrations, Dante celebrations everywhere in the world, especially the literary world. You know, they're having symposium and they're having you know, talks and, and um, mm. recitals. And I thought, well, maybe I can do something along that, those lines here in Gibraltar. I can't think of anybody else who would actually dedicate so much time and effort to Dante. So I thought, I'm the only person who can do that. So I said, well, let's do it. Mm. Apart from that, I've got a huge collection of books. Mm. I've got unseen uh, translations in English and Spanish, French also, apart from the original in Italian. So I thought, well, if I gather all the books together, I also have some paintings illustrating some of the scenes of Divine Comedy. If I do that, I'm, I'm sure I can put on quite an interesting exhibition. That, that's it, that's fine. We're doing it. And with all that research and all those resources, how did you go about collating and selecting the pieces that would be featured in this exhibition? I thought Dante is a kind of poet that no one approaches unless you somehow pave the way for them. You've got to make it easy for them. I mean, he is quite a forbidding poet. First of all, we go back to the Middle Ages. Apart from that, he's full of theology and philosophy, medieval philosophy and, and theology. Um, he also writes in Ita an Italian, which is now a bit uh, old-fashioned, obviously. We we're talking about 1300 Italian. Um, and I thought, I want to make Dante accessible, available to people. Uh, I want to make sure that they, this idea that he's the forbidding poet is, is wrong. He's actually a very interesting, fascinating, exciting poet. Um, but there are certain hurdles, you know, trying to get there. And I thought maybe the exhibition <coughs> somehow to help people jump over the hurdle and actually get to the real Dante. So, yeah. How did you go about bringing a Gibraltarian perspective to Dante? First of all, my name. My name is Durante. Now, Durante actually is um, connected to the, the name Dante. Um, he wants, he sometimes he's actually quoted as Durante Alighieri rather than Dante, but he, for some reason, he decided to shorten uh, his name to Dante. That's the first thing. Secondly, I think there are many Gibraltarian connections to Italy. For well, many Gibraltarians have uh, Italian you know, background, descent, or whatever, uh, and uh, especially Genoa, I thought. Um, and then, apart from that, we do share a European culture. I mean, I thought Gibraltar is part of Europe, or has been politically until so recently. Uh, and I thought maybe you know, we can actually try to bring that together, show that it's part of Europe. He's a European author, not just an Italian author. And we can somehow, the exhibition will try to amalgamate all those elements and provide something you know, exciting, something interesting for, for people to, to come and see. Whether they're already familiar with Dante or a newcomer to his work, what would you like people to take away from this exhibition? If only they were to go back and buy copies of Dante and try to read, maybe translation you know, initially, that would be enough. You know, or even talk about Dante, you know, or even become aware that Dante is a very important poet. I mean, Eliot said, um, the modern world is divided between Dante and Shakespeare. There's no third. They are the two greatest poets ever. So if they take that impression away, that would be quite uh, gratifying, quite, uh, quite wonderful.